طيب السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته يا شباب ان شاء الله هير وي ار جوينج تو براكتس بي سبايس ام جوينج تو شو يو هاو تو بيلد يور سيركت اون ات اند هاو تو سيميليت ذا سيركت اوكي ذا فيرست ثينج تو دو از وي شود جو اند اوبن ذا بروجرام ات سيلف سو وين يو جو تو ذا ستارت مينيو اور وير ايفر يو انستول يور بي سبايس يو جو داون تو بي يو ويل فايند ذات يو هاف بي سبايس ستودنت If you click in on it, you will find that you have many, many uh, icons there. Uh, the one that we are going to use in order to build our uh, circuit is called the schematics, this one. So this is the one that you should open. Once you click on it, it will open uh, the schematics uh, for you. This is the program that we are going to use in order to build our uh, circuit. Uh, uh, The first thing in building the circuit is adding your components. So you can add your resistors, your sources, uh, and then you connect them. Once you do that, you should, uh, uh, you should uh, put the values of the resistors, uh, values of the inductors, values of the sources. You can also rename all uh, the components. And then, uh, and then you, <clears throat> and then you can uh, set up the simulation and then you simulate. So these are the uh, steps that we will do. Uh, first, you uh, compose the circuit, you choose the values, then you uh, set up the simulation environment that you want, whether you are going to uh, simulate uh, uh, using the transient simulation or the DC sweep, okay? And then you simulate and you uh, show the curves and you can control the curves later, okay? So here we'll find that we have uh, many, uh, many buttons. Uh, uh, we will use only a few of them. For example, in order to add a component, you can add a component either by writing its name directly here. Uh, for example, R, uh, R, and then you uh, click on it. Okay, you press enter, then you will get a resistor. So some simple components you, uh, with practice you will know their names like R, L, C, and some other components you don't know their names, uh, then you will have to search uh, on them like using this, using this button, okay? So first we choose, uh, for example, R, then uh, if you click uh, with a left click on it, then it will put R here. And then still the mouse is, uh, it has R with it. If you want to put another R, you can click another left click. Still, we have the R moving with the mouse, okay, with the cursor. Then if you want to get rid of it, maybe you can uh, uh, right click. If you right click, this will disappear. And now you are moving freely. You can go and bring another component. For example, if we want another component, but we don't know its name, okay. Of course, if you know the name, you can write it here. For example, let's write L. This will give you an inductor and then enter. It will give you an inductor. L and then enter. C and then enter. And then if you want the inductor, you press uh, left click. Left, left click, it will uh, put the inductor. If you want to get rid of it, uh, uh, you press right click. Then uh, we'll start with a simple DC circuit. That's why we don't want any inductors or capacitors with us. Uh, so we'll uh, just delete. If you want to delete a component, you just click on it uh, so that it's red and then you uh, click delete. Okay, now we deleted the component. Also, uh, uh, as I said, if you want to add a, a, a new part, get new part, okay, uh, and you don't know its name, it's better to search for it. So if you click here, if you click on this button, you will get this list. This list, uh, it allows you to search for any part with its name or with its number. You have here what you can imagine, whatever you can imagine, you will have in this long list of components, uh, all practical and theoretical, components. For example, uh, if we want to add a voltage source, then you can write V. You will find that you have a lot of voltage sources, uh, VDC, VAC, V sine, V pulse, V uh, piecewise linear. Uh, we are going to use mainly, mainly three sources here. For the DC, we are go going to use the voltage source called VDC. And For AC, we are going to use V sine and V pulse. We will never use VAC in our course. VAC is used in uh, another type of analysis that uh, probably you will use in the next course in E303 in the second course of electronics. 
But for our AC circuits, if you want to analyze uh, your AC uh, signals using the transient analysis, we will use something or a source called V sine, not VAC. Remember this very well. We are going to use V sine for the AC. Okay, not, not this VAC. So never use this VAC in, in this course. Okay, so if you want a DC source, we click on VDC, then I tell, uh, I tell P spice place or place and close. Place. It will put it for you in the circuit. We'll give you a DC source, uh, put it for you in the circuit, and then we right click to get rid of it. And still the list is open. You can search for any other component to add, uh, uh, or you can say place and close. Place and close will, uh, let's delete this for now. Place and close will place the DC source and close the list. So now we have and then right click to get rid of the other DC source. Now we have a simple circuit of two resistors uh, and, uh, and, and the DC source. The default values for the resistors uh, is one kilo ohm. The default value for the, uh, the voltage source is zero. We need now to connect our circuit. We need uh, to, to connect them and set the values, okay? First thing that you should know about any resistor is that any resistor, it has two terminals, uh, one and two. So uh, terminal one and terminal two. This will be useful to us when we plot the curves because when you plot the curves, it will ask you whether you want to plot the voltage at terminal number one of the resistor or terminal number two. Of course, we know that uh, the voltage here will be different from the voltage here, right? So it will ask you, you, do you need to plot VR11 or VR12, terminal one or terminal two? So it's important to know the terminals, uh, which terminal is one and which terminal is two type. How to identify which terminal of the resistor is one and which terminal is two? By rotating the resistor. So if you click control R, control R, you will find, of course, you click on the resistor first, then you click Control R, you'll find that you can rotate the resistor by clicking Control R, okay? Rotating the resistor, the terminal that is fixed in its place, as you see, there is one terminal fixed in its place and the other one is rotating. The one that's fixed in its place, this is terminal one. The other one that is rotating, it's terminal two. So this is terminal one and the other, one, this one is terminal two. I suggest for simplicity and not to get confused uh, with, with your circuits and analysis, always keep for the horizontal resistors, keep terminal one to the, uh, to the left and terminal two to the right. If you are talking about a resistor that will be vertical, okay, keep terminal one up and terminal two down. Like here, I'm going to rotate until terminal one is up and terminal two is down. Here I'm going to rotate until terminal one is to the left towards the source and terminal uh, two uh, to the right, okay? This is just to keep uh, all your circuit the same. So always when you are asked, do you want to plot the voltage of terminal one or terminal two? You remember the terminal one is in this side, terminal two is in the other side. So now huh, the remaining is to connect our circuit. In order to connect our circuit, we'll find here two buttons. One of them is called draw wire and the other one is draw bus. We are not going to use draw bus. Bus is used uh, probably in power applications if you need uh, a, a bus that is connected to many wires. But here in our uh, electronics applications, we are going to use draw wire, okay? So we click on draw wire. This will give us a pencil. This pencil we can use to connect our components. So if you click here, and then you go up the right, and then you do another click. Then we connected now the voltage source to the first resistor. Then you go to the other terminal, you click here, then you click here. Now we connected these two resistors. You go to the other terminal, you click here, then ah, it allows you to do one bend. So if I try to go up, it will not allow me to go up. So you have to click another click here. Okay, and then you go up and you click another click here. And that's it. Now we connected the uh, components. Uh, we can set the values of the components. For example, for example, uh, let's get rid of the, uh, of the pencil. So if we, uh, sorry, if we do right click, we uh, get rid of the pencil. 
Then we can set the values and the name of the resistors. You can name the resistors anything. By clicking on the name, you can change the name. Uh, you can call it uh, Wissam, you can call it Muhammad, Abdullah, you can call it whatever you want. Okay, so you can click uh, on the name and change the name. Again, you can click the name and change the name to whatever you want. You can also click on the value and change the value. It's now one kilo, you can make it, for example, five kilo. Okay, so we made the value of resistor number one, five kilo. You can also change the value of resistor number two, let's say to, let's say to 15 kilo. Okay, so five kilo and 15 kilo. And then you come here and change the value of the voltage source, okay, to whatever you want, let's say 10 volt, okay, 10 volt. Or let's make it 20 volt because we have 20 kilo ohms total. So just to make numbers easy, 20 volt, for example. And also if you click on the name of the voltage source, you can uh, change it to whatever name you want. So for example, we can make it V1, okay. Now we have our circuit uh, almost ready. Why I'm saying almost ready? Because there is one important thing that is missing here. What is it? Uh, and this is a tricky part that many people, they make a mistake in, in this. They try to simulate the circuit like this, and this is wrong. In order for the circuit to work correctly, you have to add a ground. You have to tell the piece spice where is your reference point, where is the zero volt point, right? So you have to add a ground. That's why we'll have to go here and write GND ground. It appears here as GND. You'll find that you have GND analog and GND earth. Usually we use GND analog. So we'll tell place and close. Once you place and close, it will give you an analog ground. You can connect it here. Usually you put the analog in the bottom of your circuit. This is the uh, zero, but it, of course it's flexible. You can put it anywhere. But all the voltages in the, your circuit will be calculated with respect to this ground, okay? So uh, if I tell you that, uh, if I tell you that the voltage of this point is 10, this means it's 10 with respect to this ground, okay? So all the voltages will be calculated with respect to the ground. Okay, Shabab, so now our circuit is done. We built our circuit. Remaining is to set up the analysis. In order to set up what type of analysis that we want, we have to go to this button. This button, huh, its name is Setup Analysis. Okay, so if we click on it, it will ask us, what type of analysis do you want to do? Do you want to do DC sweep huh, or transient or there are many other uh, types of analysis, but in our course, we are going to use only DC sweep and transient. Transient plots the voltage against time. So usually we use it with AC signals huh? because we want to see the sinusoidal wave, for example, moving with time or changing with time. But for DC, for DC circuits, we do something called DC sweep. And as I explained maybe in the previous video, DC sweep, it plots the output voltage against the input voltage, not against time, it's against the, uh, against the input voltage. So you change, for example, the battery voltage and you see what is the voltage or how the voltage across the resistor is changing against the battery voltage, okay? So the battery voltage can change from zero to 20, for example, and it will give you a curve of how the uh, voltage across the resistor, one of the resistors is changing as the battery volt is changing. So this is called DC sweep because we are sweeping the battery voltage. The battery voltage is uh, moving from one point to another point and you are plotting uh, some other parameter against or versus this battery voltage. By default, you will find that we have bias point detail. By, uh, bias point detail here, it gives you the solution of your circuit, the solution of this circuit at every point uh, for the uh, battery value that you chose here. Um, so the battery value that we chose here, 20, bias point detail, it will give you the solution of your circuit at every point, current and voltage. Uh, for this value that you choose for your source. But DC sweep, it will not give you only one value, it will give you all the values for a range of the battery voltage. Yani it will not solve the circuit only for this value 20 volt, it will solve the circuit for a range of voltages of the battery uh, and it will give you plots as well. So here, because we have DC, we are not going to choose transient, right? Transient is used only for AC. Here we are going to choose for DC circuits, we are going to use DC sweep, okay? Type. We choose DC sweep, 
And if you click also on this sweep, you can set up uh, your uh, parameters. For example, what do you want to sweep? What do you want uh, the parameter to change? Here we have only one voltage source, right? So it makes sense that we are going to make this voltage source V1 to change from, let's say, zero volt up to, let's say, 20 volt. Okay, with increment, increment is the step size. Yani you want it to be zero, then one, then two, then the step size here is one. If you want to make it the first value to be zero, then the next value is 0 0.5, then one, 1 1.5, two, 2.5, then the step value or the increment is 0.5. So the increment here is the step or uh, the difference between one value and the next value. Okay, Shma? so here, what we are doing here is we are telling PSPICE, please change V1, the battery voltage V1 from zero to 20 with a step size or with an increment of 0.5. And for each of these values, solve our circuit. Okay, so it's the PSPICE is going here in the DC sweep to solve our circuit for all the values between zero and 20 with a step size or with an increment 0.5. Here you can choose uh, the, the sweep type to be linear or to be octave or decade. So the increase, the increase from one value to another value to be octave, you multiply by uh, by by two or by the decade, multiply by ten. Okay, or you give a value list. You can also give a value list. You tell the piece price. Well, I, I want for this only for these values: zero, five, seven, nine, eleven. Only calculate or solve this circuit for this uh, uh, for these values. Okay, so you can choose value list and specify the exact values here that you want to simulate the circuit for. But here we are going to choose linear, simplest uh, thing, uh, and we are going to change V1 from 0 to 20 with an increment 0.5. We click OK, we close, then we simulate. What do you expect uh, to see when you simulate? Let's see. Uh, here, here, one thing is missing. It's, it says new schematics must be saved. So you have to save your circuit first before you uh, simulate it. So, so we'll click OK. It will give us options to simulate. Let's say this is uh, term uh, 201. This is term 201. Okay, uh, uh, section, let's say section uh, X. Okay, so so we save it, term to one section X, let's say DC, because this is a DC circuit, we will do another AC circuit in another video. We click save, then it's going to simulate because we clicked already on simulate. This is the button that we click in order for simulate, to do simulation. Once we click simulate, it will give us this curve. In this curve, the horizontal axis, it says V1 is changing from zero to 20. Now, what do you want to plot? Uh, we solve the circuit, we solve the whole circuit for all the values of V1 between zero and 20. And it gives you the option now to plot. So in order to plot any curve, we are going to tell piecewise add a trace, add a trace. Add a trace means add a curve. So if we click on add a trace, it will ask you, what do you want to add? Which curve do you want to plot? Which value do you want to plot? Do you want to plot? Uh, the current in R1 or the current in R2 or the voltage in R1 terminal 1 or the voltage in R1 terminal 2, uh, all uh, the parameters in your circuit will appear. For example, if we tell, uh, if we tell PSPICE, please plot V of R2 terminal 1. V of R2 terminal 1, if you remember, this is the point between the two resistors. Let's go back to our circuit. This is the point V of R2, this is R2 terminal 1. And this is R2 terminal 2. R2 terminal 2 will be zero. R2 terminal 1, this is this point. We want to plot this point. Okay, so as you see here, we got all the values, by the way, we got all the values of the current and voltages. They appear on our circuit. This is what we call the bias point analysis. Bias point analysis it will solve the circuit, it will give you the values of the circuit here uh, for this value of the battery. Okay, Shabab? So this is the bias point analysis that we choose in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the list here, bias point detail. This is uh, the reason that we get these values here on, uh, on uh, the circuit. And you can remove these values by 
uh, by clicking uh, this, we remove the voltages, and there is another button. Uh, maybe we can add it or remove it. Uh, you can also remove or put the values of the current. So if we want the value, the values of the voltages to appear again, uh, they will appear again. Time. Now, this is, these are the values only for 20 volt, but we want the curve. Uh, the curve that uh, we plot for all values of the battery from zero to 20. So for example, we are going to choose plot VR2 terminal one. VR2 terminal one, as we said, this is the point between the two resistors. So we click on it, uh, we'll get a curve here. This curve says what? This curve, the green curve, it says that the value of R2 terminal one, when the battery voltage is two, it will be this value. When the battery voltage is four, it will be this value. When the battery voltage is 10, it will be this value. And when it is 20, it will be this value. You will find that it will give you a line. Why? Because the relation between the voltage in R2 and the battery voltage, it's a linear, right? It's uh, the battery voltage multiplied by R2 over R1 plus R2, the voltage divider rule, right? So if we multiply the battery voltage times R2 over R1 plus R2, it will give us huh, three quarters because R2 is 15 kilo ohm and R1 is five, right? So R2 over R1 plus R2, this is 15 over 20, this is three over four, right? So always you will get here a line with a slope three over four. When the battery voltage is 20, you will get here 15. When the uh, battery voltage is 10, you will get 7.5, right? So there will, according to the voltage divider rule, the voltage across uh, R2, it will be three quarters of the battery voltage. You can also add uh, another uh, trace, another curve, for example, if you want to add uh, the current, but on uh, plotting the current and the voltage in the same curve, uh, maybe the current, it has uh, values in the milliampere and the volt has values in the volt. So the current will appear here because it's in the milli, it will appear very small. But in order to plot a current on the same curve and you see it, you have to add, you have to add uh, another, you have to add another axis. So you say add Y axis. When you add Y axis, it will add another axis that with another scale. And then you say plot the current, let's say of R1, the current of R1 or the current of R2, both of them are the same because it's series circuit. So if we plot now the current, okay, click okay. Uh, now it's, it's giving you that the current, this uh, axis, this Y axis is in milli ampere and the other axis is for the voltage. So the curve, the green curve is voltage, you measure it according to this X. The red curve is the current, Okay, you measure it according to this X. If you want to delete any curve, you click on uh, its symbol or its legend down, and then you click delete. Now we deleted the current, okay? We deleted the current. If you want to add again, uh, 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 we added a, a, an axis from plot here, add Y axis. You can also add uh, uh, delete Y axis or add Y axis and then you can add a trace and so on. Okay, Shabab. Uh, what else, what else in the in plotting? Huh? Uh, this is uh, how you plot a curve against the DC uh, sweep, using the DC sweep when the battery voltage is uh, sweep between zero to 20 volt, you can plot any parameter in your circuit. Okay, uh, you can also, you can also plot uh, any equation, it's not only a parameter. For example, you can plot the power, the current times, uh, if we want to plot the power, the current times the voltage, um, you can plot uh, like the current in R2, and then you click times, hmm, times star, the voltage of R2, the voltage of R2 terminal one, let's say. This will give you the power, right? The current times the voltage, and we click okay, this will give you the red curve now. The red curve now is the power. So it's not only you can plot the parameters, you can plot any mathematical operation of these parameters. So here we plotted the multiplication between the two parameters, the voltage and the current. So the red curve now gives us the power that will be uh, dissipated in R2 
plotted against the voltage V1, yes, sir. So as V1 increases, the power, of course, it will increase uh, on this, uh, according to this red curve, okay? And then uh, you have many, many options here that you will learn with time, but I'm, I'm going to tell you uh, some, some of these options. You can convert the y-axis to log, huh? okay? Range must include zero, so you can convert it to log if, if you don't have zero in the range. Uh, you can convert the x-axis also to log if you, for some applications where you have a big, big range for x-axis, you can convert it to the log scale. You can uh, use the something called the, uh, the cursor. Let's, let's see. Toggle cursor, okay? So if you click on cursor, cursor is a very important tool because you can move and know the values of the curves at specific points. So if we use cursor, and then you go and click on the green curve, for example, you will find that you have now this uh, cross moving with you along the green curve. And the values, uh, they appear in the box here at point A1, okay? They appear the value of each point, X and Y. So here, for example, the X is 9.5 and Y is 7.16. So 9.5, uh, the value of this point, 9.56 for the battery voltage and uh, 7.16 for the, for the uh, Y axis, which is the voltage of uh, resistance number two. And you can move across the curve. If you do a right click, you will fix this point. And then if you do a left click, you can get another cursor. See, so now we fixed the first cursor at 10.5 and now we are moving the other cursor. That's the first cursor was fixed at A2 now and now we are moving uh, we are moving A1. A1 is moving and then the difference between them also appears. So if you want to get the difference between two points you can uh, stand uh, in the first point using the first cursor and then right click and then left click you uh, generate the second cursor and you move with it and you will find that you have the values of both of both of your cursors. So if you click now, right click here, now we fix the we fix the second cursor and left click, we are going to get another cursor and we move it and we get the difference between the two cursors. Type if we want to move to the red curve, for example, uh, maybe uh, on the red curve here, you will find that the cursor started to move to the red curve. So you have to click at the red curve from uh, the legend down here, and then the cursor is going to move now to the red curve, okay? If you do right click, you are going to fix the first uh, cursor, then you get another cursor by left click, and you move it. Now we have two cursors, and you can find the difference between them and calculate any point uh, in, find the exact value of any point on the curve. Okay, there are many, many options that you can uh, try to play with in order to, uh, in order to uh, access settings. For example, you can uh, change uh, the range of the axis. You can plot uh, with linear or log or change the range. You can uh, uh, use all the data or restricted data for the X axis or the Y axis, okay? So you can, you have many, many options that you have to discover by yourself. You can, uh, go over these uh, evaluation functions where you evaluate the maximum or the minimum. You can add a text label. You can, instead of calling it V1, you can call it, this is the voltage across whatever. Uh, you can add a text here to the figure. You have many, many options that you can use, yes, uh, to plot these curves, okay? I will stop here and I will give you the chance to play with all the options you can try. This is a good thing because you are going to use PSPICE in many uh, other courses other than our course. So you have to play, you have to learn by yourself the different options that exist there. I will stop here for this example and then I will give you another video for uh, the, uh, an AC circuit with the transient analysis. Okay, Shabab. Okay, see you in the uh, next video, inshallah.